Hey project managers, this is Dan Bell and today's Microsoft project step-by-step, -step, we're gonna take a look at working with calendars. Uh, calendars used in Microsoft Project, what they do is they control when tasks and resources may be scheduled to work. The project calendar also defines the general working and non-working days. So think holidays, you know, you wanna make sure we have holidays in our calendar so that work is not scheduled on those days and therefore you get a properly calculated critical path. Of course, the calendar also determines the time frames which we work and the number of hours per day and days per week. There are three base calendars by default, the standard 24 hour and night shift. Uh, you can see pretty, yeah, by the descriptions, pretty straightforward what they do. If you need a calendar that does not exist, it's very easy to create a new one as well. Uh, there's resource calendars in the system. As you create resources or enter them on the resource sheet, a calendar for the resource will be created automatically based off the base standard calendar. And what you will want to do as time goes on is make sure that you get whatever exceptions that resource have or the resources should have on their resource calendar. And we'll show you how to do that. Yeah, those could be personal days, vacation days, other things of that nature. There's also the potential to, you know, we're talking about, you have a project calendar, you have a resource calendar. Well, you can also have a task calendar, right? Um, so there may be those events where you have a task that, you know, if you port a foundation and you have a task for it, the foundation is curing, you know, obviously the standard calendar is not really the right one for that because it can cure, you know, other than between eight to five, right, during the day. Uh, so you might have the 24 hour calendar on a task calendar. When it comes to the order in which they're evaluated, this is a really good graphic to explain that. If you have the scheduling ignores resource calendars checkbox selected to on, then the task calendar is evaluated first, followed by the resource calendar, and then by the project calendar. Uh, otherwise, generally speaking, first the resource calendar is evaluated, followed by the task calendar, and then the project. You're not always going to use a task calendar, so um, if you're not fully comfortable with that yet, you know, don't worry about it. For today's demo, we're going to look at adding the remaining holidays in the project calendar. We're going to view the working days and hours. We're going to update a resource calendar for Susan Brooks. We're out of training exception. And then we're going to go ahead and test the results. Here's Microsoft Project. And I have a blank project open. It's called Simple Plan Non-Working Time. From the Project tab, I go ahead and click on Change Working Time. Now I want to make sure I have the right calendar selected. That's going to be my project calendar, and that's the standard. Uh, you notice that you have other calendars in here as well. The three that we mentioned, 24, night, standard. And of course I have three resource calendars there. As you'll note, I do have some exceptions created in here, right? So I can go ahead and put the rest of these in here at this point in time. So Veterans Day would be the next one. Thanksgiving Day, day after Thanksgiving. And then of course Christmas Day. And there are all the calendar entries for the different holidays. So if I were to scroll through here, you would see the non-working days, right? So those are the ones that are grayed out here. Okay, the 4th of July. All right, so those are all taken care of, so I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, the other thing we wanted to look at is the working times as well, right? So we have the holidays in there, but what does the working time look like? Well, in order to understand that, you can go to the Work Weeks tab here, make sure that default is highlighted, and then click the Details button. And in here, what you want to do to see what the current working times are is actually select the days, right? So you notice when I select the day, the from and to area actually shows up some text underneath there. I can actually select all of these, click and drag Monday through Friday. It shows me 8 to 12, then there's a break between 12 and 1, and then 1 to 5 for your typical 8-hour day. If you wanted to change those, you would go ahead and select this radio button, set days to these specific work times, and then enter whatever times you want in here for your typical workday at your organization. I am satisfied with the defaults though. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that takes care of this right here. Now the other thing that I wanted to do is add a training exception for Susan Brooks in here. There's a couple ways I can do it. I can get to the calendar from change working time and then select her calendar here, Susan Brooks, right? So now I'm looking at her standard calendar. Uh, you know, there's another way you can do it. You can go to view tab, click on resource sheet. There's Susan in the resource sheet. If I double click on her there and come in here, there's also a change working time button in here. When I click on that, it also brings up the same dialog. So again, they, they get used to the same place. All right. So you can do things either way, uh, whatever you want, but you see it says resource calendar for Susan Brooks based on the standard calendar. Uh, the thing that I did want to put in as an exception, you notice the exceptions tab here selected is she's going to have training event 
and we said that was going to be March 20th through 22nd. Click OK. Click OK again. And now that person has an exception for that period of time. Now, if I were to go to a Gantt chart and put in a few tasks and put that at zero, let's go ahead and indent these under the summary. Go to my task ribbon and use the indent button here. Now I want to go ahead and create some relationships between these. We'll do finish to starts. And we'll go ahead and plunk in five days each here, right? Uh, task number two looks like it starts on the 20th, right? So that is basically when that training was supposed to start for that resource, Susan. Therefore, if I assign her, go to the resource tab, click on assign resources, find Susan, click the assign button. I can see that work is assigned here. Let's close now. And what, we, what I wanted to do is to verify that those exceptions, the 20th through the 22nd is going to be in place. So if I go to view, resource usage and we'll go ahead and take a peek at this and we'll scroll over to the right just a little bit and remember the task starts on the 20th which is right here but notice no work scheduled for the 20th 21st and 22nd that's because these are calendar exceptions for susan brooks the work starts actually on thursday and friday acknowledging that you know this person is actually away at that training event right and that's exactly what we were looking for is part of the calendar exceptions, okay? The other thing that you want to look for is this. You know, if we were to simply go and obviously I'm going to put this in a way that will get me to a certain date, but you don't really want to do this, generally speaking, um, because you're putting, you're hard coding a constraint date in here. Uh, I would build out a work break, but I'm just demonstrating the fact that the July 4th holiday will be observed here, right? Let's make that five days duration. And we'll go ahead and assign one of our other resources here. We'll assign Greg. Okay, so now Greg is assigned to this task here. You can see Greg in the resource name column. If I were to highlight this, go to the task ribbon and then scroll to task, I can see Greg over here. Now the thing I wanna do is go to view, resource usage. There's Greg. What I wanna do is go to July 4th and scrolling over and just go a little bit more and there we go now if you look there's task two greg holiday's assigned to it work starts on the monday july 4th is on a tuesday right so second third fourth no work scheduled on the tuesday like we expected because of that that five-day task will roll into the following week of july 9th you know again this is basically the the steps that you utilize to update the calendars. This is the role of the calendars to make sure work isn't scheduled on either holidays or other events that are going on and it also observes the working times you specify. Hopefully this helped you out in some way. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to send us or drop us a line. Uh, otherwise, have a great day and stay tuned for another Microsoft Project step-by-step -step video in the future. Thank you. Bye.